I shot this generic card cover book for my stock photography site at flatlaystudio.com. You can find this image on there in my collection. If you've already purchased this image, I'm going to go over three things with you in Photoshop in this quick little tutorial. How to change the color of this book. How to add text to the front cover and the spine and give it that embossed look. And lastly, how to add a vector logo or any image to the front cover. So here we are in Photoshop, and as you can see on my layers menu, I've already pre-made seven common colors. If you want to create your own custom color, just click on one of these colors here, not the black and not the white, but one of these other colors. So let's just choose the red, right click, and hit duplicate layer, and then you can rename that after. And then the next thing you want to do is just go to image, adjustments, hue saturation, or shortcut as command U on a Mac, or control U on a PC. So this is going to bring up the hue saturation window, and then you want to hit colorize. And all you got to do now is just drag the hue. And as you can see, you can select from a variety of different options. So once you're happy with your selection, let's just pick a green, hit OK. And then you can just double click on that layer and uh, name it green. Now, if you want a more pastel -y color, then you can choose the white as the duplicate layer. So let's click on the white, make sure everything else is checked off except for the background. So let's click on the white and right click duplicate layer. And again, uh, just unclick this one here and go to command U, which brings up the hue saturation window and hit colorize. And again, you can uh, select the colors. And as you can see, these are more pastel -y colors. So let's cancel on that. And if you want to duplicate the black, and command U, this is going to give you a more dark and rich color. So that is how you change colors on this book. So now we're going to create the front cover and the spine. And this mock-up is only really good for text or vector images or anything with a transparent background. So let's type in the text for our front cover. So let me quickly type this all in, and I'm going to show you how to give it an embossed look. OK, so I've typed this all in, and let's just line it up as best we can centered. You can align it however way you want. You can right align it if you want like that, or left align it like that. So let's get this all lined up, and then we're going to apply the effect. Oops, there's also something we forgot, which is the spine. So let's just quickly type that in. And we're just going to rotate that vertically. Just make sure that it fits within that width. And if you want, you can also add a publishing logo. So let me just quickly grab that. I'm going to drag that in here. This is just a fake one I did. And I'm not going to worry about the color right now because that's all going to change after. So, so let's go and apply the embossed look. Let's select one of the layers with the text. We'll start with the book cover title. And right click and go on Blending Options. First thing we're going to do is apply a drop shadow. And we want to make sure that the blend mode is normal. And we're going to select a white color. And let's make sure that it's at about 127 degrees. The distance is going to be 1 pixels, 0 spread, and 1 pixels for the size. And let's make it a little bit less opaque maybe at 60%. Next, you want to hit on Color Overlay. So hit on Color, and then use the eyedropper tool and select the color of the book. And we want to go a little bit darker than the book color. So just go down vertically on the color picker and choose something that's a little bit darker. And then hit OK. Next, you want to apply an inner shadow. Make sure that the blend mode is normal. And we want to choose, again, the color of the book However, we're going to go even darker than what we just chose. Hit OK. And again, use 127 degrees for the angle, and maybe 2 pixels for the distance, 0 on the choke, and maybe 2 pixels again on the size. 
and you could play around with these settings until you're happy with it. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna hit okay. There we go. I'm gonna right click again on that layer just to adjust. And you don't wanna go overboard on the filters. So make it as subtle as you can, but realistic at the same time. So once you're happy with that, hit okay. And we're gonna apply the same layer effect on all of these layers. So all you have to do is right click copy layer style, and we're gonna apply the same thing on the subtitle line. So click on the subtitle line, right click and hit paste layer style. And again, on this little swirly thing up here, right click, paste layer style. Go down to the author name and the same with the publishing info. Now we have to do the spine, and the spine is a little bit different because it's darker, but we still want to paste the same blending effect. So let's just paste it on the book spine, and also that spine title. And we're gonna manually adjust it. Right click on the I am the spine blending options, and we're gonna make that a little bit darker because the spine is darker. So we're gonna select the color picker, choose the spine color, and make that a little bit darker. And the same thing with the inner shadow, we wanna go even darker than that. And the distance shouldn't be the same as the book cover because the spine is a bit narrower, so just play with the settings. So now we're gonna copy this one, copy layer style, onto this little icon down here. There we go. So let's zoom back out, and there you have your embossed look. Now you can see that the perspective is a little off. So what we're gonna do now is distort the text to make it kind of flow on the perspective grid. And I've created a perspective grid ruler here that's marked yellow. So let's drag that to the top, and let's just close these up so it looks a little bit cleaner, and turn this perspective grid ruler on. And now all we have to do is distort the text to follow the lines. So let's start with the book cover. But before we do that, we gotta rasterize each text layer. So right click, rasterize, and we don't wanna merge the text just yet. So we gotta do them separately. Okay, so we'll start with the book title. Go edit, transform, distort and we wanna follow these lines. So I'm gonna put the base of the B onto the bottom of that line, and I'm gonna select the middle square and follow that perspective grid. And double click to release. Let me just fix the bottom of this B because you want it pixel perfect. Okay. Um, subtitle, we'll do next. We can move this up a little bit. Let's edit, transform, distort. Once you're happy, double click to release. And this little swirly thing here, we could do the same thing. Now this is a little bit tricky because it's like, it's not text, but anyway, that looks fine like that. And I'm just gonna go and do the bottom two. Okay, now let's go to the spine and do the same thing. However, we're gonna go the other way. Okay, let's zoom out and take the eye off the perspective grid layer. And now everything looks just a little bit better. So I'm just gonna move this a tad over. And there we go. That is the finished product. So if you wanna resize this image into a smaller size, you have to flatten it first. Otherwise, the text is gonna look really distorted. So make sure you go layer, flatten everything, and then you can resize that image. That's just a little tip for you. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is just to add a simple logo to the front or an image. But the image needs to be a vector file or on a transparent background. So not like a photo um, of any kind, it's more like an illustration. 
So I have a sample one here. I'm going to copy that and paste it. You can leave it black. You can try the emboss look. You can change the color. You can do anything you want. Um, the last thing, again, all you need to do is just make sure that it follows the perspective grid ruler. So let's enable that again and click on the logo and just distort it to follow the ruler. And let's take the eye off and you can play with the opacity. You can do a whole bunch of things in Photoshop. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can follow me at thisdesigngirl.com for free tutorials, or you can also purchase some of these flatlays at flatlaystudio.com.